Joseph, patron saint of workers, blending skill with charity. Silent carpenter, we praise you, joining work with honesty. You taught Christ with joy to labor, sharing his nobility. Joseph, close to Christ and Mary, lived with them in poverty, shared with them their home and labor, worked with noble dignity. May we seek God's will as you did, leader of his family. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome as we gather on this May 1st to celebrate the memorial of St. Joseph the Worker. As we do so, we're also mindful that we begin this month of May, uh, which is in our tradition in honor of our Blessed Mother. And so we uh, remember her uh, constant intercession in the church. And as we look to St. Joseph the Worker, who is uh, also the patron saint of our uh, Archdiocese, as well as our country of Canada and, uh, and the Universal Church, we pray through his intercession uh, as well for the end of the coronavirus. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. God, creator of all things, who laid down for the human race the law of work, graciously grant that by the example of St. Joseph and under his patronage we may complete the works you set us to do and attain the rewards you promised through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now as he was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He asked, Who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless because they heard the voice but saw no one. Saul got up from the ground, and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. For three days he was without sight and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, he answered, here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight. And at the house of Judas, look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. At this moment he is praying. 
and he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who invoke your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, for he is an instrument whom I have chosen to bring my name before Gentiles and kings and before the people of Israel. I myself will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias went and entered the house. He laid his hands on Saul and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on your way here has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes and his sight was restored. Then he got up and was baptized. And after taking some food, he regained his strength. For several days, Saul was with the disciples in Damascus. And immediately he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogues, saying, Jesus is the Son of God. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Extol him, all you peoples. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. For great is his steadfast love toward us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. All who eat my flesh and drink my blood, live in me and I in them, says the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The Jews disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate, and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. Jesus said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear friends in Christ, on the wall, the west wall of my chapel, uh, is an embroidered um, picture of a church which my niece uh, um, gave me as a gift uh, some years ago. And uh, a quotation from Matthew's uh, Gospel uh, is, uh, is uh, with this uh, picture. And uh, the quote uh, simply reads, Everything is possible with God. That's from Matthew uh, chapter 19, verse 26. And it is uh, indeed uh, words that come to mind, and I certainly remember uh, sharing them on the Feast of the Annunciation uh, some weeks back when the angel 
Gabriel came to Mary and acknowledged that she was with child through the Holy Spirit. These, ex these words, everything is possible with God, certainly resonate um, in the context of this uh, remarkable uh, conversion experience of St. Paul um, in the Acts of the Apostles today. The one who would be a great persecutor of Christians and ultimately of Christ in the early church his life is transformed before us. I imagine if we uh, found ourselves in a position like that of Ananias, we would uh, show perhaps some reluctance in going to him. And yet it is our Lord who asks him to go and to lay hands on him. So that he not only will regain his sight, but that he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. It's, um, you know, powerful to, to know uh, the work of God. And, you know, when Ananias acknowledges to the Lord, um, you know, how can this be, if you will? Um, our Lord makes it so. What does the Lord tell Ananias? Go for he is an instrument whom I have chosen to bring my name before Gentiles and kings and before the people of Israel. I myself will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. Hear, heard this transformation experience, this conversion experience. Even when we perhaps might debate about uh, our own faith, certainly in this present time, that we need to remember those words, all things are possible with God. And that despite our perhaps reluctance to serve the Lord, perhaps sometimes our defiance, the hound of heaven finds his way to our heart as he did for St. Paul. And uh, the coming days and weeks, we will treasure to be able to see that as a result of the transformation that he encounters through the gift of the Holy Spirit and his encounter with the Christ, with the Anointed One, with Jesus. Um, we will see how he is part of the building up of the church. That's where when we read of his apostolic journeys throughout the New Testament, it gives us insight that God can work through each of us. As we gather on this uh, memorial of St. Joseph the Worker, recognizing his diligence um, in his faithfulness to the Lord and our Blessed Mother, we ask the Lord to help us to be faithful to our present tasks. And even if we may be presently away from very much possible that we may be away from work or in a different setting in, in present uh, because of the pandemic. Let's ask the Lord to help us in this present moment to embrace once again the gift of faith that he has given to us, that his spirit may be stirred up within us so that we can give profound testimony the living and loving Lord who has saved us, who raises us, uh, us up through his death and resurrection. The Lord is the giver of holiness. 
let us turn to him and pray. Holy God, raise us up to new life and holiness. Lord our God, you call our fathers in faith to walk before you in holiness of heart. May we follow in their footsteps and obey your command to be perfect. Holy God, raise us up to new holiness. You chose Joseph the righteous to care for your son in childhood and youth. Teach us to care for Christ's body by caring for our brothers and sisters. Holy God, raise us up to new holiness in life. You entrusted the earth to us and to call us to make it prosper. Inspire us to work wholeheartedly in this world, seeking always to give you glory. Holy God, raise us up to new life and holiness. Father of all, do not forget what your hands have made. Grant that all who work may have secure employment and a fitting standard of living. Holy God, raise us up to new life and holiness. Continue to remember um, our shut-ins, mindful of our uh, being shuttered away from one another at this time. For those who are in uh, care homes or in hospital, for all those in need, we pray to the Lord. Holy God, raise us up to new life and holiness. We pray for families at this present time in the midst of this pandemic. Um, that in the midst of present challenges, they may come to know uh, their love for each other more and more. We pray to the Lord. Holy God, raise us to new life and holiness. We continue to pray for our caregivers, those on the front lines in the hospitals, all involved in health care, and all those providing for us basic necessities. We pray to the Lord. Holy God, raise us up to new life and holiness. We offer the Archbishop's Prayer for an end to the coronavirus. We pray to the Lord Jesus who went about doing good and healing the sick. We ask for strength in body, mind, and spirit for all those who are sick with the coronavirus. We pray especially for those who are greatly weakened by this virus, enable them to regain their health. Remember also those who have died due to its effects, assist all those in the medical field who treat people with this malady and those doing research to find a cure. We ask, Lord, that through your grace, the spread of this virus within communities in Canada throughout the world will be restricted and eliminated, and that our Christian communities may joyfully proclaim the good news you have entrusted to them. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, for the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Wash away my iniquity, O Lord, and cleanse me of my sin. Pray. Brothers and sisters, and my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, fount of all mercy, look upon our offerings which we bring before your majesty. Commemoration of St. Joseph and mercifully grant that the gifts we offer may become the means of protection for those who call upon us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts.
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. And on the commemoration of St. Joseph, to give you fitting praise, to glorify you and bless you. For this just man was given by you as spouse to the Virgin Mary, of Virgin Mother of God, and set as a wise and faithful servant in charge of your household to watch like a father over your only begotten Son who was conceived by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. Your voices we pray join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which shall be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, bring into the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Richard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. All who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. So wait the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, through your death, give life to the world. Free me by this, your most holy body, blood from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me always faithful to your commands. Never let me be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
We offer the spiritual communion prayer together. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot receive you at this moment sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself to you completely. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Having fed upon heavenly delights, we humbly ask you, O Lord, that by St. Joseph's example, cherishing in our hearts the signs of your love, we may ever enjoy the fruit of perpetual peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. I would uh, be remiss if I didn't also acknowledge uh, in remembrance of uh, St. Uh, Peregrine, uh, some uh, or recently uh, maybe uh, have uh, offered the novena uh, through his intercession, patron saint, cancer patients. So we continue to remember all those who are struggling with uh, cancer for their healing. The Lord be with you, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Joseph Workman's inspiration, man of faith and charity, make us honest, humble, faithful, strong with Christ, true liberty. Make our labor and our leisure fruitful to eternity.